All right, y'all, we're in Texas, and we did not drive 550 miles for the stampede of speed, according to Donna. So it is a must stop every year, Campuzano's, for one reason. Boom, look at the big old shrimp. It's all about the shrimp, not the racing. Well, dang, here I am at the Texas Motorplex on a Tuesday night, and there's famous people here. Whoa, Clay Millikens and Jimmy Daler? You're a Jimmy Daler? I can't believe it. Dude, I watch every video. I hope I make you laugh, baby. I'll, That's absolutely. all I'm trying to do. I ain't trying to teach you. I'm just trying to get a laugh out of you. So what are we doing tonight? It's Tuesday uh, night at the Motorplex. What yeah, are we Tuesday doing? Yeah, Tuesday night at the Motorplex. We're doing the Cheap Street World Finals. Cheap Street World Finals is a class that we came up with two years ago, and it's a random index. So 650, 670, 690 is drawn out of a bag, and then every round is a chip draw all the way through. I'm, I'm the defending champion. I'm, I'm really yeah. wanting to win it again, you know. <laughs> really. All right, don't let me bother you. Come see know. me, man. All right, all right man. <laughs> World famous Jimmy Dale. <laughs> well, we are at the Texas Motorplex. Got the dog habitat all set up. Millie and Iggy are just checking things out. Not sure exactly what they got going on on the racetrack, but uh, all I know is it's all kind of cool race cars here on Tuesday night, y'all. Texas Motorplex Stampede of Speed has got it going on. Ain't that right, Millie? Ain't that right, Millie? Come on, Millie, girl. Yes. Yes. No, no, put it on the corner. Yeah, and that way you can still reference it, and I've got you. Yeah. I get to work with the Clay <laughs> Milliken. My career is gonna explode. <laughs> gonna make you YouTube famous. Yes. Courtney, what are we doing? We are here today filming some personality content pieces for Flow Racing for the Pro on Flow race, the shootout in Bradenton in February. So we wanna to get to know the drivers on a different level. We wanna to get to know the dogs and uh, see what these drivers are all about when they're not stomping on that loud pedal. <laughs> this could be a lot of trouble. It could be even more trouble if uh, we were not at the racetrack and probably in Drummond's, but. Does anyway. this count for like Sunday, starting the weekend together where you win? Because when we start the weekend absolutely, together, you win. Absolutely, it's, it, it has worked several times this year. <laughs> I'm a witch. <laughs> so Courtney's going to do some interviewing of me which is weird we normally just like totally bs it's not unusual for me her and donna to be on the phone and uh at midnight we, at midnight <laughs> uh and gossip we may gossip that happens yeah. anyway i gotta go to work yeah let's go <laughs> it is not a trip to the motorplex without visiting oliver here oliver is like a fixture how many years oliver been coming to the track four years that's awesome. Guess, but about how old is Oliver? He's 19 years old. 19 years old. And exactly what is he? He's an African Watusi. African Watusi. I am going to get over here and get my photo made with Oliver. It's Friday. Friday the 13th. I'm in trouble. Because. That one. That one. That one. That one. I don't know where Donna's at, but y'all. Donna's over there unlocking the trailer. <laughs> All of my bosses are here. So it's early on Friday. We don't run till tonight, but it's warm out and we like that. Welcome to Ennis, Dallas, Motorplex, whatever you want to call it. We're here. Let's go. We are warmed up and ready to go for Q1 here in Texas. And if y'all have been following along for a while, you know that Izzy, at some point, because we won, he trimmed his hair up. I need a, I need a, 
I need another one. Yeah. It's almost grown back. But what happened after that happened? What, what, what was the deal made? The deal was that if we want another one, Blaine would have to shave his head completely bald. Well, Jesse shaved his beard. Oh, Jesse shaved his beard. Yes, Jesse shaved his beard. He's got the uh, 70s look going. And then... Blaine is bald now. It's not. It looks good. It's, it's not so bad. It needs a little sun on it, that's yeah, all. Just need a little bit of sun. <laughs> We're thinking, but we know it ain't going to happen. The next one should be that one. I know. Look at that hair. Good night, buddy. Look at that hair. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you now, that one ain't happening. <laughs> Four rows. Four rows. Clay Milliken, along with his regular batch of supporters, has got some folks at Patriot Mobile joining the team here this weekend. I wanted to welcome the folks from Patriot Mobile, helping out with the Parts Plus, Biohaven, Rick Ware Racing Car. Milliken, if we charted his performance this year, it would look like a seismograph. We'd have these really high peaks of the, the race wins, we'd, we'd have some lows of the first round losses. Well, that's the whole key. They've got to get out of the first round. And if you're saying to yourself, duh, well, when they get out of the first round, way more often than not, they go late in the rounds. They don't have a whole lot of second round semifinals. Losses this year. Brittany's car powers into smoke, and Clay Milliken powers to the top. 3.687, 334 miles an hour, and let's put Parts Plus up on the top of the heap. An absolutely awesome run for Clay Milliken. And, you know, we had Clay Milliken on the NHRA Insider podcast, and, you know, we talked about the idea that on some strange racetracks they do very well, and when it gets cool they kind of struggle, but not there, Chris Monahan. And in St. Louis. Good way to start right there for you guys. 368, you go number one. That was a great run. You know, this track is awesome. I mean, you know, Billy Meyer and his whole family, Chrissy, and they just do an awesome job. I walked this track last night, and it's amazing. It was laid down in 1986, and it's as awesome as it is right now. And, um, you know, Rick Ware's here, and uh, Robbie Benton, He, you know, he's back there, back home. He, he told me to do good today, so that was cool. And plus my dad, Dave O's here, and uh, maybe he'll be proud of me. I think he is, no doubt about it. That's a guy that grew up, spent a lot of time in his formative years right here in Texas. Take another look at it. I guarantee you the folks at Patriot Mobile are loving every second of that. This is a season best run for Clay Milliken. The chassis arched up as it flies through the finish line traps. We saw some smoke off the car, but not big smoke. You can just see it kind of trailing some there. And Look, I, in terms of 360 runs, you want it to be that clean. Not only that fast, but you want it to be that clean as well. And that'll give him an opportunity to be further at the back again tonight. That ball head giving us some good runs. Let me rub that thing. Ball head. 368. Thank you very much. Evan, you copy me on that? Sun's out. Jimbo's out. One driver who thought those last two runs were fantastic is this one, Clay Milliken. Because you're still the only guy that's tipped into the 60s here. 68 coming off your third win of the season, and we're going into a Friday night primetime session. How much confidence do you have in this team right now? Well, all I can tell you, Sun's out, Jimbo's out, because we have struggled when it's not. But... After that run right there, I mean, uh, Jimmo's got to be walking around with his chest poked out a little bit right here in Texas because that was some capital entertainment for all these people wearing them cowboy hats and all these people in the grandstands. Man, this whole Parks Plus team got Patriot Mobile on the car this weekend. That's a first in NHRA drag race, and Rick Ware's in the house this weekend. I love my job. I love stomping on that loud pedal. All right, so my boys left me, which is okay, but I'm hanging out with all my buddies. Look right got here. in here with this old Gapco boy. <laughs> you just never know, you know, with us two 
Hey, we in Texas. We ain't Tennessee, but T for Texas, well, T for Tennessee. Exactly, and I let the old hillbilly come in over here to redneck country and hang out with us. You did show us how it was done. You went 68, but uh, hey, we're going to be at the back of the pack. Yep. We get to make a good lap tonight, try to put on a, a, a show for these fans in the stampede of speed. I guess I'm going to get out here because oh, there's okay. my kids waiting on me. Hey, they're waiting on you. They're they waiting just, on they me. left you. I appreciate your ride. Good night, brother. <laughs> Oh, I'm still rolling. <laughs> I'm still going. What do you think, Kayla? All good? That was a good run. I don't know where your RT was yet, though. It, no it, it didn't stay number one. Doug Kalitta just went 65. But you know what? Don't care. Sun out, Jimmo's out. It's like sun's out, gun's out. That's it. Boom. 68, 334. I did not know that the speed till Stevie just told me that. So, good freaking lap. Peanut butter banana dinner. I love it. We are warmed up, ready to go, sitting here in my fire suit. We are currently setting number two. Made a heck of a run 368, 334. It's dark out, much cooler. Now we'll really know, is the cold racetrack cured? Let's hope so. A wheelie didn't do good. So uh, there are just big monster run after monster run. I was like, oh yes, here we go. Let's, uh, let's uh, reset most everybody on the team's uh, personal best. Unfortunately, carried the front end, went immediately right. I got scared, I shut it off, just saying. <laughs> So we know you guys love the stuff in the lounge and I want to start doing this to where we can go a little more in depth where it's not like mad dash thrash. So Q1, Jimmo. So we know 95 degrees has been the line in the sand on this car going down the racetrack. Yeah, it's been, well actually it's, it's 90 and below. <laughs> so 95 is a good sweet spot for us. Right, right. So, um, so tell us how we got ready and what we did Q1. Well, you know, the, the, the first run, well, I mean, for starters, this racetrack's awesome. The Texas Motorplex has always been um, known for just having teeth like no other racetrack out there. And, um, you know, Thursday night, I went and walked the racetrack, and I'm like, man, this place is just solid rubber. Rip your shoes off, and it's going to be it's going to be stout. So, you know, our anticipation, like the first run, we, we went up there and we thought, track's probably going to be about 105. And, um, you know, and I think we could treat it like it's 95. And, uh, you know, so that was our plan going up there originally. Well, then, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, Dale Creasy and Dave Richards uh, had a, a, a mishap, you know, um, in the first uh, qualifying session and that kind of pushed everything back you know luckily those guys are all good so that's always a, a, a bonus in a situation like that um, but that pushed everything back so like when we made you know we were anticipating making our first run at 5 45 uh, p.m. we ended up making it at 6 17 and um, the track 
it took a nosedive quick, so the temperature got down to like 95 degrees. And um, so I'm like, all right, we might be able to swing at this thing a little bit harder. And uh, so we made some more adjustments, you know, with how we apply the clutch, how we, um, uh, you know, apply the power and stuff like that. And uh, went up there and, it, you know, ran 368, 334. And like, man, that's pretty cool. That was a good run for the team. And, and um, it was a good way to come out first run. And, and it set us up to where we were uh, last pair, you know, for the night session. And, um, you know, same thing, we kind of ran a little bit later than what we would have liked to, because I think we ended up running at like 9, uh, 947 last night is when we ran. We were kind of anticipating about 9 o'clock, but everything got shifted back, and, and uh, you know, and that's okay. You just have to be ready for it. We've been struggling on the cold tracks, um, and it's really been head scratching because normally like in, in my career of you know being you know taught by Dick LaHaye and then Connie Coletta um, who are two opposite ends you know Dick LaHaye was the, the, the epitome of, of um, making small changes and getting big results out of them and consistency and all that and um, always did good on hot racetracks and then they need to sprinkle a little bit of Connie Coletta in for me on being aggressive with things. And I've never in my career as a crew chief feared a cold racetrack like I do now. Or like <laughs> So um, we've always been like this year, we get up there, we get on these really cold tracks and we've gone down the racetrack twice when the track is under basically 85 degrees and below and um, it's really aggravating because it's like I've never had this much trouble on a cold track I've also never had as much success as we've had on a hot track which is really cool so it's like well, alright well how do we get the, the best of, of both ends of the racetrack spectrum hot and cold and um, you know at Charlotte we figured something out and we didn't really get to apply it at all at that point. Uh, but when we got to St. Louis, we started applying it a little bit. And granted, we didn't get a cold racetrack St. Louis Friday night. It was like 95 degrees. It still told us enough that, man, we're heading in the, in the right direction. So fast forward to last night, you know, we go up around 68 on that first run. Um, Number last, two qualifier. Number two qualifier. You know the you know the uh, the Texas Motorplex. You know they're putting up fifteen grand for low ET of that second qualifying session, and and then there's like a pair of Corral boots that I'm like, man, Clay Miller can look good in the <laughs> cowboy boots, right? And so you know you go up there and you uh, you know all these things that you've changed and you're confident, like you know my confidence level for that. You know, 80 degree rate racetrack was at a at a at an all time high for this year, and um, we go out there and man, you stop on the loud pedal and it leaves, and then all of a sudden there's no flames anymore, and I'm like, shit, man, I don't have this this cold track deal figured out, so I'm kicking myself and stuff, and and uh, um, you know, uh, walking. Um, all right, boys. Rick, Rick, you just like stumble in when we're doing a video. Sorry, right. I'll be out. My apologies. Hopefully you can. Ricky, thanks for gracing us with your presence. I'm sorry, Clay. Mr. Rich Fisher, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dr. Fisher. Uh, 15 East Michigan Avenue. Remember, when you want a Honda, new or used, service and parts, we're there for you for 35 years. One story, Washington County. Fisher High. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Oh, you know, <laughs> old Fisher, man. I don't know what I do without that guy. <laughs> Fisher Honda, everybody. Yeah, Fisher Honda, man. I bought, I bought a lot of cars in him over the years. <laughs> so anyway. So anyway, all right. Back to the race cars. We You're walking our, back. Our commercial, <laughs> commercial break here. Um, 
so anyway, you know, we're we're looking at this train, everybody's hauling ass, and I'm like, you know, and we go out and we stumble, and then I'm, I'm like, man, I don't have this cold track deal figured out. I'm screwed. I don't know what's going on. And then um, got my uh, my head in my hand like this, and Clint comes up and says, uh, "No, man, that wasn't that wasn't you. It just carried the front end." And I'm like, "What?" And um, you know, cause you can't see nothing at night, you don't, and I don't have radios, you know, but I didn't know what was going on. But anyway, last night, um, you know, Clay stomps, stomps on that loud pedal, you know, and there's the engine graph, but here's the, the front wheel. So you compare it to the first run, the front wheel, it's nice, you know, the front wheel is just barely dancing the, the front end here and it's pretty solid well last night this right here the front ends off the ground all the way out to one second basically where play lifted you know right about here and uh, the car was going going towards the right and, um, and that's why I had to lift you know but uh, hopefully you know, last night we, we did made some adjustments trying to put some weight in the front end we actually had to do it with a fuel tank because um, this car is hard to put weight in so hopefully we get another shot at it but at least it wasn't doing what it was doing before when the tracks got cold so I think we'll uh, hopefully we get another shot at it. So. And I think today you'll have that opportunity on a cooler racetrack it, it appears at the moment anyway. Yeah yeah that's and I'll tell you what, after being here in the summertime where it's 108 degrees, 110 degrees, and then now it's like, right now current conditions, like 63 degrees, 35 water grains, um, it's pretty good air. Yeah. Pretty good air, so it should be fun. Yep. All right, y'all. I hope you like us doing it that way because we can take a little more time and Jimbo can explain exactly what we did, what's going on. See you in Q3. Can't see anything other than that. <laughs> I know. Oh, Saturday here in where am we at? Enos, Texas, Texas Motorplex. Everybody's checking out the uh, solar eclipse right now. At any rate, pretty cool looking. You gotta have the uh, special glasses though. Solar eclipse. Hopefully, low ET coming up here soon. Definitely chilly out. We'll see, uh, we'll see what we got here shortly. So what is becoming a normal part of my trip to the Texas Motorplex is world famous newsman, Bernie McPartley. World famous, really? World famous. Already, wow, yes. that's cool. Yes. I am so thrilled to be here. My birthday was this week and what a present. Turned 29 this year? 29 for the second and a half time almost. <laughs> <laughs> So everybody, Bernie is the producer of Kibby and Friends Show, The Muscle Car Place. Uh, I could just keep going, but uh, I would be bragging on him at that point. And uh, y'all check out Kibby and Friends, Muscle Car Place, all kinds of cool podcasts. I am a big podcast guy and I always enjoy it. Y'all check it out. The race fans, are y'all not ready for some top fuel? Come on. And yesterday, in the middle of the afternoon, ran a 368, which was a very stout run. Got him right in the middle of the field. But as Clay said, when the sun's out, we're good. When it gets dark, we're not quite so good. And last night, they came up here during that Friday night live session when everybody was throwing down, and they didn't get down. So they are in the number nine qualifying position right now. But Jimmo and the guys down there for Rick Ware Racing... The Parts Plus Biohaven car. The one thing that they're almost okay with about not making those great Friday night runs, we don't do a lot of racing on Friday night. We do some qualifying on Friday night. But we're going to be racing out here tomorrow in conditions much like this. And this is when you're going to be able to, or you're going to want to shine. Jim Overhoffer, been around this game a long time, and he is a Texas guy. 
Crew chief walking away from that parts plus machine. Steve Torrance sits number one after last night's 363. Wow. Man, he hit the gas and that thing went kablooey before it went three feet. Clay pulls it over to the side and gets it stopped. Interesting that the car only went 60 feet, but the first thing Clay was thinking of is don't be in the groove in case something's coming out of it. We're going to watch this one more time in slow motion, and it's just going to look expensive all over again. It's not going to look any better from this angle. Watch this. Watch the butterflies. Open. Cylinder out. Cobb Bluey. There is no question about it. Something mechanical. Been watching these things a long time, and you know, occasionally you'll see something where a spark will jump this way or a fuel thing will go that way, but almost every time you see something that looks like that, some physical part inside the engine broke. Down here on the starting line with Clay Milliken. Clay, you hit the gas and that thing popped. What's that like in the car when it lets go that quick? Uh, it might require Tylenol, that's for sure. I don't know what it was there. I mean, we were looking to go out there and probably improve on uh, our run from yesterday. And uh, man, hey, you Texas folks, let's hear a big shout out for how awesome it is that y'all are here. Thank you guys for being the best fans we love you guys. Love y'all. You listen to his accent. He doesn't, doesn't exactly sound like a native Texan, does he? If you don't follow Clay on social media, you need to. Some of the projects that he's got going and some of the things he does, he does a lot of live broadcast stuff, a lot of social media. And he is quite the character to follow even when he's not driving the top fuel car. All right, y'all. No clue exactly what we just had happen. Massive explosion right on the starting line as soon as I hit the throttle. Uh, huge mess. Uh, I don't know. All I can tell you is it's a big boom. Nasty. Right on the starting line. Horrible. Initial thing we're seeing here is it lost oil pressure. That uh, that would definitely cause a problem. Don't know why yet. better y'all when you can see daylight out the top of the roof it's ugly carnage everywhere literally shattered rods unreal broke the cylinder head right here here all the way around basically tried to push that port out I'm going to tell you, it gave me a headache. It was, it was wild. Definitely wild. Yeah, it uh, broke the head here. You can see right through. Crazy carnage. I've never seen that. I'm going to tell you, it hurt. Just glad it didn't hurt nobody. All right, y'all, quick. Quick, quick recap. Broken oil pump, lost oil pressure, burn up a rod, hit a valve, kaboom. But they got this thing back going again. We are almost ready to warm it up. 
pretty dang incredible. Lots and lots of damage. Freaking race cars. Sometimes they hurt. YouTube, y'all, y'all, come on. <laughs> tell y'all that after what we went through it went 827 208 which is rolling is that 294 kayla 296 296 and only 274 so basically 20 miles an hour down from the 68 run and it pitched the belt off for whatever reason we will find out but Holy moly, after what we went through, that's pretty good. We just gotta figure out why the belt come off other than that. Pretty dang happy with that. All right, buddy, Q3, Q4. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, he says. <laughs> oh, man, do we really get to talk about that? Well, I mean, uh, Let's talk about Q4. the people want to know. Um, I was not here for Q3. That was somebody. That was somebody else was impersonating our team. <laughs> it was these two right here. Yes. I don't know. We're, we're all part. All right, I'm pushing the just crack it. You get real bacon bits. You get real cheddar cheese. You get real sausage. We're really. We're not getting get to uh, what we're here for. <laughs> The real we're egg. Out. The we're real out. We're egg. avoiding what happened. In the fridge. Oh, okay. Do you want one? No, no. Okay. We had another commercial break. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. From what I was told, Q3, because I wasn't here, but somebody who looked like me that was here, they told me that... Um, Basically, uh, you know, the guy impersonating Clay was backing up from the burnout, and uh, somewhere along the line, we lost oil pressure. And um, somewhere along the line, the, the people that were impersonating myself, Jesse Snyder and Clay Milliken, we didn't catch it. And um, so, unfortunately, um, you lose oil pressure on one of these things. Um, your valve train takes a pretty big hit. And um, your rod bearings and your main bearings take a pretty big hit. And bottom line was is we just we screwed up and the thing, you know, when, when uh, that guy impersonating Clay stomped on that loud pedal, it got real loud in a different way. And, uh, Unfortunately, blew the thing up, but um, you know, came back and the guys did an awesome job. Put everything back together. And last night, the thing was, uh, or the, yesterday evening, the thing was running pretty good. We, best I can tell, it was on a pace, probably run 366 at like 337. Uh, but unfortunately, um, we 
broke the blower belt at about 550 feet. And um, the best, uh, we, fi we figured out a problem uh, with the, uh, the idler pulley. And uh, basically the, the idler pulley was wobbling around a little bit. Um, just didn't have it shimmed up properly. And that's what kind of caused the belt to break. But we made some changes like clutch and stuff to try to take advantage of this racetrack because it's so awesome and um, we um, and it showed us something it showed us something really well so we're pretty excited about that and um, we're hoping that that will carry on in the race day and we can go out and run you know and I mean you got to run mid 60s at Texas Motorplex otherwise you might as well go home because as I, as I told people yesterday, this track isn't for the weak at heart. It like, is not. You have to get after it, and it, it'll take almost anything you can throw at it. And it's just, it's probably the most awesome track we've been on all year long. Like, I don't know that we'll even, we probably won't see that the rest of the year either. So, so but we know with this team, if we, Get our, get our act together and get everything right that we've got a good race car and we can go run good and, and compete on Sunday. We had a tough customer, Justin Ashley. You know, the kid does good on the tree, obviously, and then uh, the car runs good. You know, Tommy D and Mike Green, they do a great job running that car, so, you know, they won a lot of races. Six of them. Yeah, six. So, yeah. Gotta have our, gotta have our act together. All good. We'll be good today. Oh, yeah. Although y'all don't know, this is this is actually race day while I'm filming this. You're, you're going to see it as qualifying, though. <laughs> <laughs> Hands down. Hands down. Probably maybe one of the greatest few days of qualifying in drag racing history. I mean. Just go check out qualifying. It's unbelievable how quick, how fast everybody was going. It was unreal. Josh Hart's number 15 at a 373. Are you kidding me? We go 368 and we're number 11? Unbelievable. But, heck of a racetrack. Throw down out there. That's all there is to it. Cannot wait for you guys to get to check out race day and please tell me you liked me and Jimbo sitting down like that and actually kind of spending a little more time going through each run I enjoy it we're going to keep doing that for a little while and I certainly hope you guys like it and I certainly hope you have enjoyed uh, checking out the unbelievable qualifying from the Texas Motorplex crazy for us come out of the box number two qualifier and then go out there and big boomer massive explosion whoo man it's crazy how much that hurt and it's also unbelievable how quickly the uh, kids were able to get that thing put back together and get it down the racetrack in q4 as always appreciate you guys watching liking subscribing and sharing Yes, I was filming this on race day, but anyway, thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one from race day, Texas Motorplex. Let's go have a great day there too. All right, guys, we're here with Clay Milliken at the Texas Fall Nationals. Um, Me too. How have you been running today? We have not had a good day. That's the bottom line to all of it. I mean, uh, went out there, had a problem with the oil pump. Big boomer. Yeah. Drag racing. Yeah, I heard about that. Um, what did you think about the Texas Fall Nationals? For me, it is just 